all about conserving, all about saving. Little kids, kindergartners, first graders, second graders, know to turn off the lights when they're done using them, know to recycle paper, to use both sides. But when it, cons when it comes to conserving water, things are a little bit different. When I talk about conserving water, I ask you, are you conserving water? You may think, yeah, yeah, I'm conserving. I'm taking shorter showers. I'm turning off the taps when I don't need them. And I'm running lesser loads in my laundry. These are all very helpful actions. But in fact, they're only the tip, only 10% of a huge iceberg. And the 90% to understand that and to understand what it's made of, you have to understand that, the, what, that what's coming out of a product is not the amount of water that's used to make it. So the amount of water that's coming out of a shower head, that's not all the water. There's gallons and gallons of water that are needed to make the actual head. So let me give you some examples. Have you ever thought that your favorite cotton shirt could have a water footprint of 766 gallons because that's the amount of water going into irrigating the cotton fields? Could you ever think that the top of your sandwich, a single slice of bread, could have the water footprint of 11 gallons? Or could you think that the cup of coffee you drink every morning could have the water footprint of 34 gallons? That's essentially what a water footprint is. The water footprint is a measure of humanity's appropriation of fresh water and volumes of water consumed and or polluted. In other words, it's the amount of water needed to make the product and the amount of water that the product actually excretes. So now that we know what a water footprint is, where do we get the water? We all know it's not just from groundwater and lakes and streams. In fact, there are three different categories. There's blue water, green water, and gray water. Blue water does come from groundwater and streams that we use in our products. Green water comes from agriculture. So when we're eating fruits and vegetables, we're, we're essentially using green water. And finally, gray water is reused water. So the water that a product lets out, and then we use that water again. That's gray water. So you know what a water footprint is. We know where we get our water from. But how do we use that water? We use it in three different stages. The indirect stage, direct stage, and consumer stage. Let's use the example of grape juice. The indirect stage would be the field of grapes, the water you use to water the field. Then you'd be the machinery, so the tractor and the machines used to actually ground the grapes into juice, so the water used to clean the machines and everything. That's all indirect. Direct is once you actually have the carton of grape juice, how much of that juice is water and how much of it is grape juice? And finally, the consumer. Once I take in grape juice and I have to go to the bathroom and the sewage, all that water, everything combined, indirect, direct, and consumer, is what a water footprint is. So let's look at an average person's day life. There's Bob, he woke up, he wants some breakfast. So he can either have eggs and bacon, which is 85 gallons in all, cereal, milk, or coffee, which is 60 gallons. So say he chooses one of those. He then gets to work and he's thirsty, so he buys soda from a vending machine. That is 209 gallons. That was more than either one of the breakfast options. And then he has, goes to his cafeteria, he has lunch, he can either have a soda, hamburger, and fries, which is 502 gallons, or a turkey sandwich and chips, which is 92 gallons. If he knew about what a water footprint was, he would choose a turkey sandwich and chips. And then he gets home, ready for dinner, chicken, vegetables, and rice, 207 gallons, or lasagna, bread, and salad, 243 gallons. And then late night snack, Bob is a little weird, he likes popcorn and tea, so he has 13.5 gallons. <laughs> and then at night, He's going to bed and he's thinking, okay, what was my water footprint for today? 1,326 gallons in just food. And food is 92%, which shows that food is a huge part of your water footprint, but also shows that there's another 8%, which is the clothes, cars, everything else you use in your, other, in your daily life. So I was really intrigued by this idea and so decided to go to waterfootprintcalculator.org or .com and decided to find out what was my water footprint? What was, how much water was my family and I using? So uh, it turned out that my family was using 5,089 gallons per day. That is huge. When I think about that, like a gallon of water, 5,000 of those, it's, it's just mind blowing. And just for me at home, not even at school or my extracurricular activities, just at home, 1,168 gallons per day. And that's lower than the US average, 2,000, 220 gallons per day. Imagine all the people in the United States, 2,220 gallons per day. So now that I know about what a water footprint is, I'm gonna make the right choices in my current life and in my future life. Next time I wanna buy sweatpants, something to wear at home, I'm not gonna go to Target or Abercrombie or buy something expensive 
that needs a lot of, many gallons of water to create. I might go to Goodwill or Ryu Village, especially if I just want to wear it at home, because I know that that amount of water that's used to create a single pair of pants, they don't, I don't need to multiply it and buy a new one just for me. Also, when I waste food, I look at one piece of lettuce and know how many gallons of water goes into that food, and I know not to waste it. I don't want to put it in the garbage where nobody can use that water ever again. So I challenge you to go to waterfootprintcalculator.com and find out your water footprint, encourage your students, and whether it's taking bigger actions or smaller actions or anything at all, to do something to change. And just imagine, if 7 billion people on Earth 50%, if, they, if their water footprint was cut down by 50%, the change it could make. And I'm not telling you not to wear clothes or not to drive your car because it's going to waste water. But I just want to explain to you that water footprint is not an action but an idealism. The more you understand, the more you know and the more you can act. So now that you know that Earth, the Earth is running out every day, every drop, one by one. And if we can save even a little bit of water, then everybody can live on this Earth in 50 years.